Let us uh, get to know the idea of a stack machine, which is a device widely used in the implementation of programming languages. I just want you to understand the, the core principles behind it. Um, but I'm going to use this as a, a proxy to show you that um, when we are thinking about effectful operations and this idea of mutable state, the state doesn't have to be a heap per se. And as we will see in the stack uh, machines example, the state is going to be a list. Okay, so stack machines are a different way, or you can think of them as a, a different computer. Uh, computers usually use registers to uh, store temporary variables and perform calculations. Uh, operations take parameters, uh, for instance, move, that takes the value from one register to another. Um, whereas with uh, stack machines, uh, this kind of computer uh, doesn't use registers and instead it uses a stack to store its temporary uh, results. All the operations have um, the parameter, the, or put it another way, the parameters of operations or the arguments of operations are always implicit in that they have to be, they are stored in the, in the heap, sorry, in the stack. Uh, so you don't call, um, you know, add of one, two, you call add and the add operation expects the stack to have two elements so that it can pop the two elements and perform the computation and return it to the stack again. Um, the benefits of such a virtual computer, because it's not uh, usually uh, a hardware device, it's more of a representation of programs, is that it makes for very compact object code that doesn't have, uh, again, because operation, you just need to write the operations, all the implicit parameters are given uh, by means of the stack that it only exists at runtime. The code is variable free, which simplifies analysis. And there are examples of virtual stack machines uh, in the implementation of the JVM, so the, the virtual machine that runs Java, and the CPython interpreter as well. So let's look at this example. It's written in Python, but it's really, um, it's just as a way of showing you pseudocode. So let me write this down. Okay, so this is my code. Uh, what I have is, I want to perform uh, the multiplication operation is can be implemented by means of two pops, where I pop the first operand, I pop the second operand, and I push the result of calling of multiplying the both operands. Right, so the result is being stored in the in the stack again. Uh, so for instance, I can write this program that uh, performs uh, two times five and then 10 times two uh, by doing a push of a value two and then a push of a value five, applying the multiplication operation uh, and then apply, uh, pushing another value of two and then performing a second multiplication. So we have two operations, uh, push n, two basic operations. The first one is a push that takes a single constant and uploads it to the stack. Uh, and the second operation, uh, which is a pop, that takes the value out of um, the stack. Um, so what is our state? So these are the two operations. So what is our state? The state is going to be a list of numbers, or aka a stack. So let's try to define each of these operations. Okay. So, um, instead of heap operations, now I'm going to call them just effectful operations, as it's a more general term. So the first thing I want to do is I want to define define the pop. So pop operation, uh, the pop operation takes a lambda, that is the state, uh, and what I wanted to do is um, I want to take the first element of can just do first of h so this returns the top of the of the stack so if you think of the stack the list uh, as a stack then its first element is equivalent to pop um, and i want to return an eff right so if i want to return an eff what is the change of uh, removing the first element of the stack well it would be the rest of the list 
Uh, and the result, what is the result? The result is the first element of the list. That's how I implement the pop. Okay, so I'm communicating the first element of the, of the list, and the effect of that is changing the state by removing the first element of that list. Second thing I want to do, I want to implement the push operation. So I want to do define push. Push takes a single value n. And then it's an effectful operation, so therefore it takes an h. And now I want to return an EFF. Okay, so what is my new state? My new state is adding n to the list. So I do a cons. That is the new state, and the result is going to be in this case, nothing. I just wanted to return void. Okay. So next, what I want to do, let me try to define this multiplication operation. So I want to do a multiplication. Multiplication takes a lambda h. Um, and next thing it does, oh, actually, let me do something else even before that. I want to show you how pop works. So if I do run state, you remember that I was using that function. May I give it a single function, one, two, three, one, two, three, and I pass it my function pop. What that should do is it should call this function and return the modified uh, heap. So if I run it, so the modified heap of performing a pop is therefore the rest of the list, right? Because I removed the one from it. Similarly, if I do a run state, I have a list one, two, three, and I do a push of 10. So what will happen is that the element is added with a cons. So what you'll see is a list with 10, one, two, three, All right? Here it is. Okay. So I can even do a test, check equal, two, three. And I can assert that the result of this is going to be a list with 10, 1, 2, 3. Can run it again. Parentheses are missing. Okay. Let's see if this works now. Okay. So now it works. Uh, so now I would like to implement this uh, this multiplication operation. Okay. So how do I think of this? Well, what this is doing, I told you before that the bind works kind of like a, a define. So what I want to do is I want to call pop and I want to take the result and store it in a variable. And I will call pop again and I want to store that result in another variable. So what we want to do is we want to use the define the lambda. I did the <laughs> want to use the bind. Okay, so I want to bind the first pop. And the result is going to be the x. Okay. Then what I want to do, I want to store the result of the second pop. So I want to use bind again. That results in a lambda of a y. And finally I want to call pass these two values to another uh, stateful operation, which is a push. So I can just do push takes x, y. Oops, why isn't this? Okay, let's close all the parentheses. See if the thing is working still. Okay, so now what I would like to do is call. So how do I call it? I do run state, give it a list with two elements, three, two and three. Multiplication of that should give me six, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call my mult. I run this. I see a list with a single element six, which is awesome. That's exactly what I wanted to do, All right? So it follows a pseudocode. Each assignment becomes a bind operator uh, where on the right hand side appears first. And then the variable appears uh, as the parameter of the lambda. And the result is whatever follows. So in this case, the second define is here. Uh, then the result is a y. And finally, you return a push. Okay. If I call this, 
I'm expecting it to return a list with six. Test is passing. This is all good. So what I did was I implemented this, implemented the push, and I implemented the multiplication. Okay. So next, what I would like to do is I want to call all of this. Okay. So now I want to do the fine frog. Okay. So how do I combine things? Well, I want to pass the state along. So one thing I could do is I can just use a, a bind and I can discard the value. So I do lambda x1, just ignore that. Call then uh, a bind of push five because the bind is also propagating the changes in the heap, uh, sorry, in the state, which in this case represents changes in the state, in the stack. So then I want to do an x2. Then I want to apply, I want to call this multiplication. I want to do a lambda x3. Then I want to do a, a push of two. And then I want to do another, finally, another multiplication. Okay. Finally, I can do a run state. I pass an empty list and I call this program. What I'm expecting to see is a list with 20. See if that's what happens. And it is, indeed it is. Okay, so a few things. Uh, so we did just this step. Uh, oh, we can even, of course, check to make sure everything is fine. Okay, thing works. Okay. So of course, this is pretty ugly. Uh, you may be wondering, well, can we do better? Of course we can, right? Uh, maybe we can write a specialized bind that takes, um, just doesn't use, discards the value. Uh, ideally, we would like this to be a flat thing, so it takes multiple uh, elements in the list. So let's try to do that. What we do is we define a sequencing operator. Uh, we can even use the dot notation to represent multiple. And what we do is we call... Um, We'll take the first. First, we check if the list is empty. So if the list is empty, uh, what do we do? Hmm. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. If the list is empty, we kind of, we don't want that. So we'll just write an error. I actually don't remember how I did that. List must not be empty. Ah, but we can actually uh, confirm that because we can do, um, So this would be the first element of the list, and then this is the rest element of the list. Okay, so if the list is empty, that is fine because we know we have this single operation, so we can just return edge. Um, and otherwise, uh, every element of this list is gonna be, um, it's gonna be a stateful operation. So what we wanna do, otherwise, we wanna call a bind operator that takes the, the, the first element which is H, and it should be an op. So let's call it op. So I want to take the operation, right? And uh, we're going to pass a continuation that takes the value and discards it. And then we don't care about that value, right? So now what we want to do is we want to call the sequencing of the first element of H and the rest element of H. Um, sorry. Oh. So essentially what we want to do is we want to call sequence and we're going to pass all the elements of the list. Right? So what we're doing is we're passing the first element to op and then the rest to L. OK. 
Okay, and then we want to close this. This is work. Of course, it's not age anymore, it's up. Okay, so now I want to call program two. Okay, now what I want to do, call sequence, I don't need this. Okay, I don't need this. No idea if this works, let's see. Okay, now I want to call this on my program two. Oh, but now this should not be, this should be like program three or something because we already defined other programs. Should be program four. Let's call this program four. Oh, it worked. As you can see, if I change the result, it does break. Okay, so what I did was I ran this. Now it's much simpler, much flatter, because that's the problem. The problem of this bind operator is that it really makes this really uh, ugly kind of cascading effect. Um, so I, what I did was I defined a sequencing operator that just combines calls bind recursively. Uh, there's a key point here, which is using apply um, and also using the dot notation selectively to make the first element uh, stand out. Uh, this only works if the list has at least one element. So therefore I have this case where the list is empty. I just return this first app and you cannot call sequence uh, with an empty operation. So if you call sequence like so, it should give you an error, which is pretty nice. See, error deem is match. Okay, so this all works magically. Um, and this is exactly what I do here. And now I can clean it. Okay, the problem here is now we cannot combine, right? So it, it's not really obvious how we go from one to the other. So we would like to have, you know, this This is just a stopgap solution. It doesn't really generalize over, you know, the case where you want to have some like this, but some that have, uh, that work exactly like a bind. Uh, so for this, in the next video, what we're gonna learn is how to do this with some uh, help from macros, which is a feature of Racket that doesn't exist in a lot of programming languages.